Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, January 2nd, around 11 p.m. Mountain Time 2020. The models are in, and they're not funny. Spain is going to be hit insane. It'll be record snow totals in Spain. Well, coming in the first week of January 2021. But the big story... The UAH global temperature update for December 2020 is in, and it was even corrected by people in our own circles. Plus 0.27 degrees C is the sixth biggest drop in history since the beginning of this map and indicative of temperatures dating back to 1986. Global warming much? I doubt it. Keep calm. It's cool time. You've entered the effing awesome classroom. Let's get on with business. December 2020, the second snowiest on record for Pittsburgh since 1880. Hello, Pittsburgh since 1880. Yeah, that's a wrap on December 2020. And what a month it was for snowfall. Pittsburgh recorded 27.5 inches of snow, making it the second snowiest December on record. The snowiest December on record goes to 1890 with 41.8 inches. Now at 27.5, it's no slouch. Find a couch. Tuesday snowfall in Des Moines sets daily record with 9.6 inches. Well, and most people think that's more than enough. Des Moines shattered its daily snowfall record for December 29th when 9.6 inches fell Tuesday at the Des Moines International Airport. The next highest daily snowfall on that date is from over one century ago when two inches fell in the capital city in 1907. And they were pushing cars back then, Model T's. Omaha records daily record for snow. Ho, ho, ho. Well, Santa's gone, but the snow will remain. It's insane. All that snow you shovel Tuesday, pat yourself on the poor aching back. It was a daily record. From five to seven inches of snow fell across Omaha Metro on Tuesday as moisture laden, well, yeah, the global warming goodness fell where it should never have fallen. Record snowfall blankets, GI Hastings, where the f is this? Grand Island received around four inches of snow from Monday into Tuesday, which was their lose day. Yes, year-end snowstorm blanketed Grand Island in central Nebraska beginning in the early morning hours of Tuesday. It was a record snowfall for Grand Island on that date at 3.8 inches. That broke the previous record at 3.5 set back in 1936. Those pricks. Record-breaking 7.5 inches of snow marks the 13th snowiest December day ever recorded in Spokane. People are pissed because they thought global warming was going to happen and they're dressed like schmucks, completely soaking in the global warming goodness into their body core and freezing their arses off. Record shattering snow leaves slick roads overnight to refreeze. Hello, Oklahoma. Wichita reaches record New Year's Day snowfall as people don't even know how to sled. Al Gore's dead. Provisional world record for the highest air pressure was set in Mongolia just a few days ago as majority of Asia is hit by historic cold. The highest pressure ever recorded happening. Yes, just in the new year. An automatic weather station in Tsun U recorded a mean sea level pressure of 1,094.3 millibars along with a bitter temperature of 45 point, negative 45.5 C. The highest pressure ever in the coldest temperature ever. And that's not all. At the same time, the strongest low the next day in the world delivered unprecedented snow to Western Canada and the Northwest U.S. Deadliest catch ever? Yeah, I think so. On Wednesday, December 30th, a monster storm intensified across the western pacific one that brought record breaking cold and snow to japan the system set many new monthly low temperature records across japan including the nation's northern town of hokanami where staggering minus 32.6 c or minus 27 f was logged 
shown below. Some eastern and northern regions are also forecast to pick up four plus meters. That is 13 plus feet of snow during the first week of January. Well, welcome to the new world, the new world order. So these records are unprecedented. Now let's check out the forecast for the U.S. Western storm continues to bring multiple hazards. Wintry mix to the east. A series of powerful storms is about to kick you in the... <whistles> it will produce high winds, several inches of rain, and feet of mountain snow across the northwest U.S. and northern California well into the next week. It's a tweak, just like I'm about to tweak the camera. Tweaking it, an eastern storm moving north of the mid-Atlantic and north coast will produce a wintry mix across the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, and northeast like a beast. So we have winter storm watches and warnings in the northwest. Winter storm watches and warnings for a little trickle of snow up the northeast. And this pattern will continue. Let's check the models. And let's just pause it. Let's bring it back. Here we are on our January 3rd, and by the weekend, here is end of the weekend, Monday, it's looking like Monday, Tuesday is your lose day in the Northeast. Just a tippy touch of snow. Some regions hit hard in the higher elevations, and then the snow is going to continue to move into the West. This is the big story. The La Nina pattern has really kicked into high, into a high notch. Check it out. We're looking at upwards of 10 feet of snow in Washington in some regions. And this is just through midweek. While next weekend is guaranteed, and we're just getting this new model data in. Check, it, check this out. A secondary nor'easter is coming through next weekend. To pummel areas like uh, Philly that hasn't seen snow in days. But these models are short-lived and short-term. So here we are on Thursday. Here's your Friday. And check out the Northeast during next weekend. They're going to be picking up a heavy snow squall and snowstorm, a nor'easter, followed by a secondary system that's going to kick them in the asker risk. Can I say that? So that's what the model is showing. But more importantly, let's go back. Take a look at the snow totals here in Washington State. This is like 20 feet of snow up in Washington State. And that's their fate. It's a pretty significant system. And we're only looking 234 hours out. That's high confidence in these models. Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, is even picking up a little bit on this tippy touch. Let's go over to Europe where we began the podcast here and take a look at this snow that's about to hit here january 7th and 8th wow if this model stays true that could be some record snow falling in regions where they're growing food for all things hello are you growing your own food i hope so calgary has no plans to call snow root parking ban after record-breaking snowfall up in canada yeah the city of Calgary has received more than 4,000 service re requests regarding snow on the roads over the past seven days. And guess what? We ain't moving it. <laughs> that means you're totally fluxed. Three, third body found after a landslide in Norway. Record-breaking snow up in near Greta's boyhood home there in the Scandinav. But Norway, not Sweden, they have their own issues. But third body found after a landslide in Norway, seven still missing. Oh, that means 10 are underground already. Holy crap, and frozen to death. Newly discovered Greenland plume drives thermal activities in the Arctic. New paper coming out. Has nothing to do with you folks. Everything, nothing to do with CO2. Everything to do with the sun. A team of researchers understand more about the melting of the Greenland ice sheet than ever before. They discovered a flow of hot rocks known as a mantle plume which <laughs> Ben Davidson over at Suspicious Observers and others have pointed out has been in peer-reviewed literature over the last three years. Now, these mantle plumes are proving that the earth dynamo of the inner and outer core and the magnetic uh, 
iron, hardcore. And it's all bullshit. It's more of a three-dimensional fingering of effects. And I'll just show you some of that evidence right here in this picture. You can see this Falbard, this Falbard plume, the Jan Mayen plume, the Iceland plume, and here's the Greenland plume. The main feeder of all the plumes is the Greenland plume. And it is, in fact, according to these researchers, the Greenland plume that is melting the ice sheet that is off the continent. Not the continental ice, because that's building at epic proportions, never seen before in human history or recorded time. But the mainstream that wants to keep up the narrative of the global warming nonsense wants to tell you that the, the ice shelves off of Greenland are calving faster than ever before, and it's your fault. Well, here's a paper that says, suck it. It's not your fault. It's the center of the earth, which is now being energized by increased electricity from space. As our magnetosphere wanes, more electrical activity plummets into the polar regions, you know, through that aurora belt, and it goes right down to the core, increasing that plasmoid down there and melting the subsurface, creating these plumes which equal booms, by the way. Surface conditions on Iceland could not be ever more freezing. Record ice building on the surface for the last three weeks in the, in the realms of six, seven gigatons a day. Hello. That's a sh ton of ice. No melting there. Just offshore where the mantle plume is, heating the subsurface water. It's not you. It's not CO2. It's the Earth, well, powered by the sun. Seismic update. We've got a little jiggy storm happening here in the west coast of California. Now, tens of millions of people have already fled this shithole, but there are still hundreds of millions of people living there under the, uh, the rule of the leader, the king, Gavin Newsom, <coughs> who has shut down everything, made everyone poor, starving to death, and... Hopefully, there'll be a large magnitude earthquake to get the rest of those 500 billion people out of there or however many idiots still are in California. Who knows? doesn't matter because they're going to starve to death if they try to make it here. It's nothing but 500 miles of desert from there to here. Good luck. Worldwide Volcano News Update. No major volcanoes popping off. Everything is popping off a little higher than normal, however. Sleep... Sleeping volcanoes rumble to life in the eastern Carib. That's the Caribbean. If you're not up on slang, eastern Caribbean islands issue a rare evacuation alert as volcanoes rumble. Over on Oppenheimer Ranch Project, over there. No, actually, it's up there. We just put up a new video, and people are watching it, like salivating over it. The government warned these, those living near the volcano to prepare to evacuate if needed. Yeah, well, that's when you evacuate. Thank you for telling me. The most recent warning was issued late on Tuesday for La Soufre volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This means almost 100,000 people on this island alone in St. Vincent are at risk of loss of life, loss of crops, and loss of, well, infrastructure. So big heads up there. La Soufre, St. Vincent, we reported on this. There's a new lava dome. There is a map and a warning uh, issued. We just put up a video on Oppenheimer Ranch Project to detail all this, so go check it out. And you can check out Soufre, St. Vincent here on the Volcano Global Program and check out the eruptive history, latest activity reports, anything you want to know over at the Smithsonian here. Merapi Volcano also awakening in the last 72 hours with excessive seismic activity. Almost epic, this uptick in the last 24 hours. Over the past several days, seismic activity from Merapi Volcano, Indonesia's most active, has been increasing significantly, suggesting a more intense phase of volcanic activity is on the way, kids. And that means boom time, clearly. Merapi is... Uh, effectively erupted at VEI 3 and 4 consistently since 2010. So it's anyone's guess where this baby will go. 
at the volcano also seismic swarming over the last several days not looking good uh this baby Etna erupts to VEI 3 and 4 regularly over the 1,000-year period, typically associated with minimas. And we can scroll all the way back here into uh, the Dalton and the Centennial and see VEI 3 here happening quite significantly. Etna, Etna has also gone off at VEI 4, and there's so many people in that region. It, it's a potentially deadly volcano that can cause all types of havoc. Not only that, we've been reporting on Reykjanes Ridge in Iceland. The volcanoes there have been upticking and, sh and are pretty indicative of just solar minimums. Last time it erupted back in 2009-10, and we're back in the 2020 minimum. Well, it, it, it's guaranteed that some of these or all of these volcanoes will be booming in just a few months. La Palma also, unfortunately, seism the largest seismic swarm since uh, 2017 has occurred. And the 2017 swarm was the first one in, since 1949 of that scale. So what we're looking at here is uh, an ongoing eruptive event, which is leading many people to pause. If this portion of the island collapses into the Atlantic, whew, millions, tens of millions of people's lives are at risk in six hours. Now, if you want to know about the timeline to destruction that we've just augmented, and we're going to be augmenting it more with Grid failure and war here. Boom. Stone Age extended for a long period. Come check us out over on Parlor at Oppenheimer Ranch. At Parlor, one word. We only have 336 followers. I'd like to get that up to 10,000 as quick as possible. Hello. It's the new fake book, but it's not fake. There's no censorship. Volcanoes, they be exploding. More to come. Way more to come. We've got a lot to talk about. Coronavirus has thrown around 100 million people into extreme poverty just in the first year. World Bank estimates 500 million by the end of next year. So if you don't have the proper prior planning to prevent piss poor performance in this type of world, you're fluxed, period. Incredibly well-preserved young woolly rhino revealed by melting permafrost. Now, the ice road truckers haven't been able to get this out of this region yet, but they're making the ice roads now, and one of the best-preserved woolly rhinos ever is going to make its way to scientists soon. An incredibly well-preserved woolly rhino with many of its internal organs still inside has been revealed by the melting permafrost in Siberia. According to the Siberian Times, the Ice Age creature was revealed by the thawing permafrost in Yakutia, where it's minus 50 degrees. The only reason it's thawing is because uh, gold miners are shooting hot water into the cliffs and making them collapse and melting them so they can pan out the shite. There's a video here where you can see the actual animal and collect. Click the links below to get more info, more science, more knowledge. Stick it in your head. U.S. officials are reportedly privately worried Russia stole the blueprints for U.S. blackout restoration. Well, I don't think it was Russia. It was China. But the mainstream media and the powers that be will never let us know the actual facts. Everything you know is a fucking lie. Yes, it's the exact opposite of whatever they say, especially when it comes to Lame stream shmedia. Now, what are the blueprints for U.S. blackout restoration? Well, let me break it down for you. The powers that be have a schematic for what would happen when an EMP, a solar flare, or something else takes out the grid that we've been warning about. Guess what? Another country stole them. So they know our plans, which means they can, well interrupt them so in a blackout scenario another country that now has our information knows exactly what we'll do to get the grid back up so as we power the grid back up they're going to shut it down you know what that means yeah world war three coming soon to a planet near you now flat earthers tried to sail to the edge of the world from italy and they thought it was in the mediterranean this is how stupid flat earthers are uh, some of our watchers have been regularly emailing me about, I, I need to go check this out. The earth is flat, man. I, I, I looked into it. Now, these idiots 
thought that the edge of the earth was in the Mediterranean for all places. I, I just think people need to travel a little bit. Please, if you're a flat earther and you've never been on a plane and traveled around the world to another side of the earth, that should be your number one mission. Not taking a boat 800 miles out into a small sea where you live looking for the edge of the earth. Because all that happens then is you look stupid and you get arrested. And then you break out of jail, you do it again, you get arrested again. Because the edge of the earth is not in the Mediterranean. On the other side is Africa. And I won't even go into that with you. But we've known that for quite some time. That Africa is on the other side from Italy. So there's that. Mexican cave contains signs of human visitors from 30,000 years ago. Yes, the earth is not 6,600 6, 600 years old or whatever any of you disillusioned people think. And I love you, even though you think that. But there's a lot of scientific evidence to prove that, well, humans have been around for hundreds of thousands of years. Like queers, in fact, the current knowledge just a decade ago was that humans only populated North America around 12,000 years ago. Then the Clovis people enigma occurred, and then the Salutrian people enigma occurred, which was withheld by the Smithsonian and Dennis Stanford, a friend of mine, who was made to keep the information private until recently. They knew that Americans had lived here on this continent at least 17, 18,000 years ago, but they couldn't make a peep because as soon as you peep it, it's like you're Galileo and you're, you know, chopped up, guillotined at the cross or whatever the fuck they do. But now this evidence pushes shit way back into infinitum. If you think that uh, North America was only populated 12,000 years ago, not only are you an idiot, you don't know anything about science. And now what they're finding in this cave in Mexico is that there's occupations back to 32,000 years with advanced tool making. How much of a tool are you? I'm making it right now in your tool. I just made it. Evidence of human occupation in Mexico around the last glacial maximum. Now, if you have $139, you can buy the paper. If not, I'll supply you the links for free on the abstract because that's all you need to read. Now, the FAA notified after a large blue UFO was seen above Oahu. Something is... Oh, scary. my God! What is that? And it's not just fireworks lighting up the sky in West Oahu. Yeah, shut the front door. But there was actually the blue streak in the sky in Hawaii in the new year, and a lot of people are freaked out. It's just a light blue streak. I mean, it's such a tweak. It's definitely not extraterrestrial because they're far more advanced than a, like some kind of a wispy blue streak that moves up and falls down. It, it sounds like a hoax, some kind of a light in a balloon. Total nonsense. Now, the largest dam removal in U.S. history is about to occur, and this will restore the salmon into rivers that they've been blocked from since the 1800s. Same thing happened on the East Coast where I lived. I had no idea until I started getting into environmentalism about 12 years ago that there are billions of salmon that have been prevented from moving up the coast of the Americas on the eastern shore of the Atlantic um, since the 1800s. Once they started making dams, all anadromous fish. Now, anadromous fish are fish that spend a period in the ocean and then come back to migrate up freshwater rivers to lay their seed. These anadromous fish include the elusive Pennsylvania shad. And some of the rivers, like the, yes, the historic Delaware River, allowed the shad to run hundreds of miles all the way up, but they still have dams and they have fish ladders and other dumb shit. We need to blow up all these fucking dams because they serve no purpose except to prevent biodiversity from happening on our planet, which keeps humans alive. The one thing humans have lost in their narrative over the last 200 years since the 
uh, modern uh, industrial revolution in the 1800s is that the only reason we're alive is because hundreds of millions of other species are alive that we eat. We eat plants and animals. And I know a lot of you think we don't need to eat animals, but you're just delusional idiots that call yourselves vegans. We need to eat everything. And, and as soon as the grid goes down, all you vegans can suck it because you don't have enough seeds and plants to make, you, make it through. And either you'll eat, have to eat your neighbor or kill a fucking animal. So there's that. But they're actually allowing anadromous fish to come back into the rivers. Now, these anadromous fish provided the populations for the last 300,000 years that have proliferated and become humanity to survive. And it's the anadromous fish population that allowed us to get to where we are today, which is many people are calling overpopulation. So by restoring the anadromous fish population, we are actually we are actually providing a gateway for humanity to exist after the next paradigm, which is grid down, global war, and complete famine for most of you. I know, that's a terrible way to end the video. New radiation vest technology protects astronauts and doctors. This is coming out today, well, a week ago, but still, it's important. These are This is clothing that we could all use to protect ourselves from the incoming cosmic rays and the eventual destruction of our planet and the new paradigm, the magnetic reversal, which is going to happen in a few decades while we live. Now, the big news is the temperature has dropped almost a half a degree on Earth in just one month. And according to Roy Spencer, it's because of La Nina. Now, I respect him. But he obviously hasn't watched our video on the Great Conjunction. The gas giants have everything to do with the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, the cooling of the planet on 30-year downstrokes and 30-year upstrokes, and the ruse that has been global warming for the last 30 years on the upstroke. We just hit the downstroke, folks, and it's down, down, down from here. Coupled with the Great Conjunction, the Magnetic Reversal, and the Grand Solar Minimum, well, we call that the f***ing Ice Age, folks. Hope you got something out of the video. The next Ice Age has just started, and it smells like someone farted. Be safe. Proper prior planning prevents piss-poor performance. If you haven't listened to a word I f***ing said in the last four years, well, good luck. And that is a motherfucking boom to your disinformation. Grow food now. Get out of major cities. Find a source of clean water near the continental divide. Dig in. In the next few years, it's going to get pretty freaking jiggy. Hello? Hello? McFly, are you there? Hello? Anybody?